So this is the lookout point. There's Meg. And we can see here out like this, the lake and the mountains. We're way up, probably 1,600 feet of elevation or so. And we're at this clearing called Pinnacle View or Pinnacle in the Cougar Mountain Trail System. That's Meg up here. I'm gonna jog up, get my cardio up. You can see Meg coming. Sorry for the shaky video. And there's Meg. This is the trail we're walking down. It's full of sunlight and trees, which supercharges the air with oxygen, which can give your brain up to a 35% boost in cognitive performance by increasing cerebral blood flow and blood oxygen saturation during aerobic exercise, like jogging down a trail or walking at a brisk pace up the steeper parts for an hour, which we are doing here today, more or less. Meg says this is beautiful. She's an artist, so she's good at pointing out segments like this that have a lot of natural beauty. Being in the forest, has a anti-depressing, mood-boosting, emotionally, physically, and mentally healthing effect on people who hike or walk in the forest. So Meg's uh, helping to clear the trail there. Um, if everybody who walked on the trail helped to clear the trail, it would make it easier for the volunteers who maintain it. Just a concept to share. It's just the truth. I, I like for, I'm not talking about what people believe in here. It's good to have spiritual faith too. I'm just talking about the physical benefits of exercise and movement and activity. God didn't give us muscles or we didn't evolve with muscles, however you want to think of it. Our muscles and connective tissue and joints and brain are so that we can move, not so that we can sit around a lot. And sedentary lifestyles are linked to all sorts of metabolic syndromes and diseases. So if anything I can do to encourage you is to get out and do something, go make it happen, move. You're meant to move. The brain is meant to move. Movement is life. You can always get a joint replacement. You know, go out there and make it happen. Live brighter. You could die unexpectedly in an accident. While you're alive, try to make the best of it. Go get more life and stuff it in your time. Go do something active and, and play games. It's good for neuroplasticity. You want to do stuff that's stimulating to your mind. And one of the best ways to stimulate your mind is to exercise in nature. With that, back to it, 73. My name is KJ7IOF on the Ham Radio Networks. My, my actual name is Aaron. But you can leave comments if you have any ideas. If you have any ideas for future your videos please please let me know thanks again for watching do you know what fasting does for you it gives you cellular regeneration there's no way to reduce insulin levels in the bloodstream even in normal people or diabetic type 2 type 1 the only way to reduce insulin levels is to fast now what does fast mean fast means you're not eating food you're only drinking water you're, you're going to do a water fast and what it means is you're going to do a water fast and you're not going to be eating anything you're just going to be drinking water now i did take a number of different things i drink coffee every day so i've been drinking my coffee now i always drink my coffee black i don't add sugar or cream or anything and you could take a d3 vitamin d3 is used by more than 300 different chemical reactions in your body. So if there's one supplement you can add other than a multivitamin, it should be a D3. Vitamin D3 and add some omega-3. Too much omega-6 increases inflammation in the body and it's all the vegetable seed oils that people eat. Canola and Wesson oil and all of this. Processed food gunk that has sugar and oil in it always has omega-6 acids and those increase inflammation. Omega-3 which primarily comes from fish, that's a healthy that's a healthy fat. And monounsaturated fats are healthier than saturated fats. Saturated fats can be a cellular irritant to the lining of your veins and arteries. So, you know, they're okay in moderation, but you should add some more monounsaturated fat. And um, sleeping is important. It's the most important meal of the day. So one of the best things you can do is uh, not expose your eyes to light or screens before bed. Wake up at the same time every day and um, go to bed when you're tired and don't look at the internet or read online. You know, consider switching things up. Maybe read a physical book. Maybe write a blog posting or a journal and don't just watch content endlessly and mindlessly. Do something creative. Do some artwork. Uh, write an article. Read an article. Do something stimulating to your brain. You know, uh, something to keep you engaged. I was talking on the 146.960 uh, 220 network using my uh, Baofeng UV5R. It's a cheap ham radio to hit a local repeater in Puget Sound. And even the older, you know, geriatric guys that are on that network, they were talking about activity and fitness and um, the neurogenesis and stimulation and growth of ne new nerve cells and brain cells from physical activity, but also benefits of staying active, by boosting emotional and mental health. And remember, when information occurs with an emotion, it becomes a memory. So one of the the best things to 
to create engagement with information is to have an emotional experience. The emotion is what solidifies long-term memory, and that's why PTSD exists. When something strongly emotional happens, it sticks to your long-term memory better, and that's what you're aiming for. You're aiming for enhanced neuroplasticity. Children younger than 10 have way more neuroplasticity. They're the fastest learners in the world. They can learn language and new information at a rapid pace that's vastly underappreciated in America with very mediocre education, and everybody knows it, but not everybody's applying it. So I'm telling you, so you can go to a parent-teachers association meeting and, and demand higher quality education and better educators and a better education system. I want to make a difference by encouraging other people. And the only way I can figure out how to do it is, is with this YouTube video. Other than when I tell people this kind of stuff when I'm at work, after I've helped them with other issues they came in for, or when I encounter someone randomly when I'm out and about because I'm a loquacious extrovert. Well, I don't normally make selfie videos, but I felt like doing it. So maybe it's the three days of fasting. Maybe it's because I stopped taking Adderall. Maybe it's because I'm just being a healthier, higher functioning version of myself and I actually give a shit about helping other people. And that's why I'm telling you this. I'm not trying to sell you anything. With that, cheers, friends. Godspeed and good luck with life. Here, we see mushroom growing on a dead log. And why am I bringing that up? Because there's a mycelium packaging company that's replacing styrene with mushroom mycelium. You should check that out. There's all kinds of mushrooms. Careful, if you're out foraging, don't just eat random mushrooms. Some of them have a liver toxin that will kill your liver. And then you will need a liver transplant. On the way there, you'll turn yellow with jaundice because of the metabolite poisons that build up if you don't have a functional liver. So be careful never to eat a mushroom unless you positively identified it as a safe one using a guidebook. All right, well, there it is. What forests do is they recycle themselves. So all of this compost and tree litter will turn into soil and the mushroom breaks down dead trees and turns it into soil. And it's a sustainable, renewable, biodynamic process. And the mushrooms are one of the main recyclers along with fungi, other fungi and bacteria trail we're hiking on has these cool um, engraved signs like this to help you understand the directions uh, thanks to the city of Issaquah and it tells you if you go that way how far and if you head down this way how far. Meg says this part of the trail where it goes from a sharp curve all the way down like this is more interesting to look at so there you have it. One of the benefits of hiking you get to go out into the forest. That was my take on what Meg is saying. Well, he often misquotes me. I adapt what you say, well, so I don't steal do what you, you really, said. I mean, you're directly quoting me, so to misquote me when you are saying that that's what I said is a misrepresentation of who I am. <laughs> Some people would agree with me. Anyways. Prove this trail is not ADA compliant and probably not good for a motorcycle or a bicycle. Here's a pretty early log that you have to transverse either by stepping on the top like this really pretty, the texture. and going over. The texture is good for reducing slipping hazards when it's wet. It adds traction, that's right. Here are other mushrooms growing at the base of this dead tree. Meg pointed this out the last time we were hiking. And this is a humongous tree that will eventually come down because mushrooms down here, right? here on the base are starting to break down the dead tree at its base and again mushrooms are the forest recycler so those are going to recycle you can see by size there's meg she's five or five three and um, she has normal sized hands average sized hands a little tall for her height or i mean the, her hands are a little bigger for her height they're similar to mine and i'm five foot eleven my hands are plus one in climbing terms Meg says her hands are a plus one in climbing terms. The width from fingertip to fingertip is an inch longer than my body. Meg, um, Meg wanted to enjoy these zero calorie. Here you can see the nutritional label. They're just basically carbonated water and flavor. They're called LaCroix. You saw me crushing one of those in one of my other videos for the uh, smelting in our new uh, metal furnace that runs on propane. But uh, yeah, we're just looking out through the trees like this. You can even see, if I zoom in here, you can see the water. Meg pointed this out through the trees there. That's Lake Washington, which runs between Sammamish, Issaquah, and part of Bellevue and drains into Puget Sound. Listen to the sound of the wind in the trees. Meg likes this sound. Do you hear that?
Now, I know this will sound weird, but Meg's sniffing actual flowers. I believe um, sal it looks like a salmon berry to me, but um, these flowers, oh, that's a type of rose. So it's, it's extremely flavorful smell. Now I can smell it better because I'm fasting, but Meg can always smell it a little better than I can. They smell delicious, very floral, kind of sweet in the sun. The, they've been warmed by the sun, which helps to radiate some of the... Some of the essential 